Hello and welcome to the fifth CPSA How to Hit series, sponsored by Browning and filmed here at the National Clay Shooting Centre at Bisley. In previous series, we've covered the sporting disciplines of English Sporting, Sport Trap and Fitas. And this current series, we're going to be covering the trap disciplines of Down the Line, Automatic Ball Trap and Olympic Trap. So we thought we'd do a quick video covering the differences between sporting shotguns and trap shotguns. As you can see in front of me here, I have a selection of uh, Browning shotguns. Here, we have a Browning 525 Sporting. Next, XS Pro, and these two here are the sporting shotguns. Next one we have a Pro Trap, and then we have a Pro Trap High Rib. These two are the trap guns. And I'm going to discuss the differences between sporters and trap guns. The big difference between this and the trap gun here, we have a more open uh, pistol grip compared to the, the tighter trap, trap grip there, which enables the gun to be pulled in tighter. This allows more flexibility of the wrist when mounting the, the gun. This is a 30 inch model, the rest are all 32s. Common for sporting guns is the Schnabel forend here, as opposed to the beaver tail forends you find on trap guns. The beaver tail forend on a trap on a sporting gun is becoming more popular now, but the a lot of sporters you will see with what's called the Schnabel forend there. One of the biggest differences on a sporter to a trap gun is the trap gun has a higher comb on the on the stock. This is because a trap gun tends to shoot a pattern 70% higher above the mark than the sporter, which is usually set for 60-40. That's 60% above a mark, 40% beneath. A trap gun is 70-30. That's because when you're shooting trap, the targets are rising. A trap gun also tends to be heavier than a sporter. That's because it's pre-mounted and it makes it a lot smoother to move the gun and there's a lot less movement than it is usually on a sporting target. As you can see also, the rib is slightly higher on the, on the, uh, the flat ribs trap gun and on the high rib trap gun. This allows the more head up position and an increased peripheral vision when shooting. Instead of being down on the stock, we're up increasing the peripheral vision. In terms of chokes, Dedicated trap guns, fixed choke, come three quarter and full. Now we have the ability with the multi chokes to adapt which chokes we want to have in there. The sporting gun, again, being more versatile, tends to become as a multi choke a standard these days. One thing is becoming more and more common these days, you tend to find on a lot of shoots, trap guns being used on sporting targets. This is because of the, the longer barrel a lot of trap guns tend to be 32 inch, um, the extra weight make it more stable and because of the multi choke makes it a general all round gun. The sporting gun to be used at trap, generally you have to put a higher comb on or a comb razor to get that higher pattern, this, like I mentioned earlier, to, to shoot the rising target. One thing that's extremely useful on all shotguns, as you can see in here, is the adjustable comb. As you can see, this one here, if it was down completely in, is what has a Monte Carlo stock with a, a, a high comb. As can be raised, it can be raised even higher to suit the shooter so the gun fits in properly. As per these two here, the, the, the adjustable comb enables a good gun fit, which we all know is absolutely paramount if you want to shoot well. All shotguns need to fit you. But if you want to do the job properly, it's worth investing in a gun suited for that discipline. So you want to be a trap shooter, invest in a trap gun. But like I said earlier, for a sporting shooter where there's a lot more versatile targets and a lot more variety, you can use both. As you'll see in the coming episodes, I'll be using the two trap guns on the various disciplines. So you'll be able to see them both in action over the next series. 